At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, we are welcoming back a guest that we've had previously in the past, Kelly Fabiano. Now, she is a life coach and death doula, which I am completely fascinated with. And she is the founder of Life and Death with Kelly. And we're going to be talking today and exploring why she became a death doula. And, you know, if you're interested in knowing more, we went in and did a beautiful podcast a few months back that you can check out. There's some shorter clips on YouTube, as well as the longer version on all the podcast platforms, as well as YouTube. So check it out if you have more things. We'll be covering different topics today, though. So enjoy. Thank you, Kelly, for coming back. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So I know that there's some people that may not have tuned into the first podcast. So I'd love for you to, you know, uh, tell everybody just a little bit about yourself. I know that you do, you know, from from life coaching to death doula to having your own company and everything like that. But, you know, what is it that you would say, like, who you are and what you exactly do? So just to kind of summarize for everybody. Mm. Um, well, I, I founded Life and Death with Kelly, uh, just under two years ago, and I'm a life coach for moms and a death doula for everyone. Um, I think at the core of both of those offerings is really wanting to hold space for people during really sacred transitions. Mm -hmm. I think the transition, um, from, you know, being a, a woman to a woman who's also a mother mm -hmm. and the transition between living and dying are such sacred transitions and there's a lot going on during both of them. Um, and I just wanted to hold space for, yeah. for both, both human experiences. I love it. And it, it's kind of like those two opposite, you know, spectrum experiences <laughs> yeah. too, you know, you like life a new life and change that is associated with that. And then, and then death or that transition into whatever the next chapter is there. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so that's, uh, that's fascinating that, that, that these, you know, so what you basically do is you become that anchor for these, for use of a better, not use of a better word, life changing, altering mm -hmm. experiences. And, um, I know that, you know, a lot with, and that's largely, I mean, we talked a little bit about the death doula stuff in the last podcast, but we talked a lot about really finding the voice of the individual mother within the experience of having a child and not losing yourself within that and really having that ability to anchor um, and knowing that you're still an autonomous person that can have your own life and that sometimes that is forgotten mm -hmm. in our society and culture and also within just tendencies of mothers to overgive and kind of lose their self. And so, mm -hmm. you know, that's a large portion of your work. And so that's what I would highly recommend if you want to learn more about that, about really, you know, finding that identity within motherhood and knowing that you still have your separation of self in there. Um, and the, but, you know, so that's one part of your work. And then you got into the death doula. And it, can you explain just for those that are listening, what is a death doula? Yeah. So I guess the elevator pitch or the, the quick one liner um, is that a, a death doula is someone who provides non-medical holistic support to their di the dying and the care community. So often um, their care community are their loved ones. They're not always their loved ones. Um, so it's, it's just offering that support for everyone surrounding that person's death. Um, and the piece that really tugs on my heart is very similar to the life coaching in the sense that I feel like when someone is faced with death, um, even though they are the ones that are dying, it's often there's that, that feeling or that need to perform for your loved ones or to, um, 
not really talk about and face what's what's currently happening. No one's really holding space for you in the way that I think a death doula can. Mm. Um, and so I just, it's really important for me as a death doula to support the dying in leaving this world with as much agency as possible, um, which is similar to the life coaching. You know, yeah. I just, it's such a sacred time. And I think it's, it's really important that it be on their terms as much as possible. So, yeah. And, and some of the things that you do, you know, can be really much anything, right? You know, mm -hmm. like from from cleaning out closets and drawers to organizing to helping with estate planning to mm -hmm. support to just being that that ear to all of it, right? Yeah, yeah, it runs the gamut. Um, there are death doulas that focus primarily in legacy support. So if someone is um, uh, has been diagnosed with a terminal illness and they have a play they want to complete or a recipe book or something they want to leave behind to the world or their loved ones, um, that doula will help facilitate that for them. Um, there are doulas that just primarily sit bedside and sit vigil. Mm -hmm. um, there are doulas that get involved with home funerals and creating ceremony around death. It really... I think that it can be really anything. It's mm -hmm. it's just full fledged support in in any way. And like you had mentioned, the the cleaning out of the closets or doing some of the things that may seem like the kind of boring admin work. Mm -hmm. If you're doing that, you're allowing the family members and the person who is dying to focus on the matter at hand and not worry about paperwork and, you know, um, what insurance carries and all of that stuff or covers. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's okay. across the board. <laughs> it's across the board. And in that across the board, you know, is there an area that you find yourself doing a little bit more work in? Yeah. So mm -hmm. the founder of Going With Grace, a Lua Arthur, um, that is the program that I, I went through. Um, she had mentioned that while we may have things that we do in our, our current occupations that maybe we don't love, um, like she was an attorney, for instance, that that might come full circle in, in this work. I am a huge, huge organizer. I'm really big in, you know, um, I've, I'm big at liaising between different departments and I used to work in corporate finance. Um, and I've noticed a lot of what I do is help to organize and, mm. uh, look into benefits, what benefits are covered through hospice and through insurance versus, you know, what you might need to pay privately for, or, um, a checklist of the things that need to, um, be completed before you die or, house cleaning, all of that stuff. The stuff that I said, I don't want to touch that. That's not where yeah. I'm passionate. <laughs> um, I, I am when it's, when it's taking it off of someone's plate who just does not need that. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting. Sometimes what we're the best at or what like keeps them coming around. It's like, we want to do this, but this is like, this is like our gift. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, yeah. <laughs> it, and no matter what, you know, it's like, I, I see that over the years, like, I've uh, had people where they're like super passionate about, I don't know, some kind of different field, let's say like a creative field or something, but like they're like super gifted healer. And they're like, we, I don't want to do this. But like, they just keep on getting pulled to that. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you know, and it's like no matter what they do and what they want to do over here, it's like this gift that just keeps on leading them to like be more of a support over here. Right. Yeah. And so it's like this natural ability that you had to organize and to be able to not be fearful of documents and legal jargon to be able to look into those things for yeah. people, you know, and it's like, you know, not necessarily the most interesting aspect of reading a policy, but no. you know what, <laughs> you, you know that you can and you do when it provides so much support. But like my question goes a little bit deeper and I know we talk, covered it a little bit before, but like what was it that said, you know, like, let's go to this going with grace program. I mean, did you have, an experience where somebody that you love died and it was a complete disaster and a mess or like, you know, like what was that calling for you that said something can be different here and you mm. got called into this program? 
I think I was always kind of drawn to at least elder care. I've always had such a deep respect and admiration for my elders. So I did as, as a younger adult, um, I worked for a home health care agency as a senior companion. So I think that's always kind of been in my makeup. Um, but okay, so you were when you were younger, you were already doing senior companion work. Yeah. So that's kind of a an avenue of this doula work, and it's just taking it to the next level. Okay, so there was yeah. something that was already in the thread. Yeah, I'll keep it going. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh no, no. Um, my dad died, and he had been sick with various diseases, I'd say the last decade of his life. He had diabetes, he had cancer, he had heart issues, he had all of it. Um, and when he was dying, I could feel that he was very old fashioned and private. And so there were, you could feel, or at least I could feel in the room, all of this fear and all of these unspoken words that were just hanging around in the air, but he, he could not express them. Mm -hmm. We were not a safe space for him to do that. Um, he didn't want to put that on us. And that, I, I think, you know, he was surrounded by his entire family and he died alone. Mm. And if I can provide that I just, I wish I had known that death doulas existed when he was going through that. Now, I don't know that he would have been willing, yeah. um, but to just have a, you know, a stranger, someone that is just a, a you have no, no attachment or history with to just sit and hold space for whatever you're going through. I would have loved to have been able to to give that to my dad. Mm. And I hope to be able to do that for other people. That's beautiful. Now, in, so there were so many different aspects in, in this that you just shared, you know, like, uh, it's interesting that you say that he's surrounded by people, but then he died alone, right? Mm. And then that there was a lot of things that maybe he had wanted a voice to help in, you know, maybe he wouldn't have taken the, that that help and the support from a death doula, but like you see the value in what that could have been. Mm -hmm. Now, do that also beg the question because a lot of times when families are going through things, right, that it's just as hard, if sometimes harder, on the loved ones as the person that's going mm -hmm. through the transition. Is there like work within that you do that you sit and you support the family members? Yeah. Yeah, so my first client outside of volunteer hours was actually a woman whose father was dying. Mm -hmm. And it was all remote support um, because her father lived in, in Southern California, dark, like further south. Um, and it was really just holding space for her and, and taking phone calls and and supporting her through it. I never met her father. Mm -hmm. I offered to uh, go down there or to have even a Zoom call, or uh, but he didn't want it. So it was really supporting her through that. Oh, okay, yeah, because I see that as being like uh, something that would be very beneficial. I'm just like mm -hmm. thinking through the experiences and clients yeah. I've had and different, you know, it, it, it seems as if sometimes, yeah, like because when you're in that process of, let's say you get, information that your loved one and let's say it's your your parent mm -hmm. and they had a limited time to live and then you're now suddenly you thought that they had years to live yeah and you have to figure out all of this other stuff and juggle this and maybe have a family of your own and other stuff and it just how you know yeah so I see that as being like a really big actually probably avenue of support is that yeah. that family support you know oh, how do we navigate this how do we do this how can I even take this call like I don't want to even face like calling the funeral home you right. know like you know right. like and having somebody there with you that knows the information that has went through these experiences that can be that shoulder but also that kind of advisor in a way yeah yeah and and if you don't know because I'm new I'm new to this work 
you can find out, you can do the research yeah. so that they don't have to, because yeah. they certainly don't know, yeah. you know, uh, most of the time. Bec- and, and even if it's just, I, I feel like it's really hard to be resourced to do all of that. You're just kind of going through the motions. Um, and it's, but yeah. and it's something that like in our society, I mean, I'm sure in like, there's a few different cultures around the world, more Eastern cultures that more do an embrace of, of death and the legacy and a celebration. But here, you know, I don't know if it's the filtration down of the religious influence or what, or, you know, the different belief systems, but like death is like hush hush. It's like not talked about. You you don't want to, you know, like, I mean, people feel that it's like, to even talk or ask a question of, do you have a will in order or this or that is suddenly like you're an evil person for asking yes. that. It's just like, right. no, not insinuating anything, just wondering, do you have your ducks in a line? You know, yeah. like, but like people stick their head yeah. in like the sand, like an ostrich yeah. and they want to <laughs> avoid the subject at all costs. Mm-hmm. And you're like, well, well, there's some things that need to be looked at. And then I feel like when they're when people are faced with death, it's almost like it bulldozes them. Right. Whether they're the right. person that is experiencing some kind of, you know, terminal illness or passing or a shifting in their health and or cognition that they're they're no longer going to be able to operate at that capacity. Right. And or whether it's, you know, a family member that hears it, you know, like mm-hmm. Yeah. And then when it happens, it's survived through. And then kind of put away, it feels like it's, oh, it's yeah. not, you know, there's not, there isn't a lot of space for grief beyond, you know, a couple of weeks. And then it's, well, are you over it yet? You know, <laughs> maybe not someone isn't as bold as to say something like that. Although I certainly actually did have that said to me. Um, but it, that's the expectation, you know, you move on. Yeah. Um, and I just wonder if we, cause my experience, I was terrified of death. Um, I was just going to ask you that, like, where was you horrified? Your, like, cause you know, like sometimes and, and, you know, and it's, it doesn't take away from the healing and the work that's done, but oftentimes you hear that saying that the, the healer goes or is attracted to what they need to heal, mm-hmm. you know? And, oh yeah. And it's, so it's like, it, you find that when people have these specialties and stuff like that, that on the flip side of it was some kind of overcoming that they needed oh, yeah. to do. Yeah. I mean, death would, would literally, I'm, I'm in my late thirties mm-hmm. and it would keep me awake at night. I don't even want to tell you how many nights a week I would, I would stay awake with that cycling through my head that, well, what if, what if today is the day I was so terrified of death. And what I loved about going with grace is the program. The first couple modules are all about you facing your death and facing the fact that your life is limited. This is not, Mm -hmm. you know, this is going to end at some point. Um, and really, empowering you through that, you know, so you know, it's going to happen. What do you want to do about it? What can you control? Well, I can control what happens to my body after I die. Mm -hmm. I can control who's around me when I die, you know, um, I can control what spiritual experiences or rituals I want surrounding my, my dying and my death. And so you get creative and it becomes more of, it's like grabbing some of your power back. Yeah. Now I live, I, as cheesy as it sounds, facing my death enabled me to live a life more fully and authentically than I ever have. And so I just wish that we could all just face it because it's going to happen to everyone. <laughs> I feel like the Grim Reaper over here saying that. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button. And one, you know, the one. Just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. I think we need more healthy conversations. And I mean, I'm even thinking that that program sounds like something that everybody should be going mm, through. You know, yeah. it's it's kind of like when I talk to people that are in 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 recovery or something, and and you know, they talk about like the twelve steps, and and it's like, well everybody should kind of work those 12 steps at one point, regardless of whether if you have an addiction or a substance abuse problem or, or a love addiction or whatever the case may be, it's go and work those steps to find out about yourself, to forgive, to let go, to make amends, to go through the process. It feels like that's like 
a beneficial thing for just humanity. Yeah, in, it in does. Like, it and like this, does. this program that you're talking about of like having like the first two modules, just like you facing your own death. It's like, when do we do that? You know, yeah, like we, most, most of the time don't. people don't even write down their their dreams and their goals. Like if you ask somebody, what is it that they really want or what is, what is one of their top three things that they would want to do in the next five years? They oftentimes they stare at you. Right. Yeah. And if they can't yeah. even tell you what they do want, imagine the face of something that they don't want. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> I just I think that um, going through that program really put a different lens on life because I, I look at my life now from a lens of, well, I, I truly don't know if I'm going to wake up tomorrow. I don't know that. So who do I want to be today? Mm. And yes. how, so when I made that career shift, it would have maybe been smarter to have worked in my, my previous career a little longer, saved a little bit more money, uh, made sure that my business was up and running really well before I made that transition, but it was time. I could feel it was time. Yeah. And I don't regret it. Yeah. I don't regret it at all because I think, well, if it is tomorrow, if tomorrow's my day, I know that I did everything I could to push myself in the direction that felt the most aligned with what I wanted to do and who I wanted to be. And you took that leap. Yeah. And, and that leap in the faith is one of the best things that people can do. Yeah. And, yeah. and you can look back and you can say, well, maybe if I did this or if I did that or if I saved more of that. But then you don't know what the domino effect mm -hmm. of that would be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't know, like maybe would working in that in that dynamic for a little bit longer, burning the candles at two ends, being incongruent with yourself. Would that have caused maybe a little bit of physical on balance of maybe even diseases or ailments to form mm. inside. I mean, we don't know, like we right. can't go down the what if trains, right. right. You know, yeah. like it's either way, but you knew that it was time to make a shift. Mm -hmm. You were called. And if you look back across the, the, the beautiful thing that I like when I hear people's stories of how they like do these things, especially these interesting things that you never hear about. Like, I mean, like you're the first death doula that I've encountered. Right. You know, and and and, and you can say that's that's uh, very um, not normal for most people to encounter a death doula. But it's kind of odd that I wouldn't having had spiritual shops for 13 years, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like, so I feel like I, I would have come across, but I haven't, <laughs> you know, but, but the, um, the, but hearing when people have these interesting, very unique career paths, um, is that having, when you look at their life or when they share the story, there's these sprinkles of that mm. already so apparently being, like the seeds are being seeded years prior. Yeah. Like the fact that you were a caregiver for the elderly, the situation that unfolded with your father and his passing. And then, you know, being introduced to this program, you were already doing life coaching work. You were on that path and you were like, had your experience that you had when you felt out alignment with being, you know, the mother and identity. Yeah. And, and then, you know, boom, Right. Yeah. And it, it's like, but it all led. Yeah. Right. That's and, a, the, and, the way you. Yeah. And, it's, and it, it, it's it, was exactly like, it, it was right there, you know, yeah. but we often think that, you know, <laughs> that how did we end up here? Well, mm -hmm. it's right there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't because I mean, I think and we talked about in the the last um, time we spoke about life coaching. I grew up really super sensitive to the fact that a lot of women seem to lose their identity when they become a mom. So I was a teenager watching these really depressing movies about women that either died or, well, they did that killed themselves when, you know, lost their mind in becoming a mom. And um, so that in itself too. And, yeah. Like, which made me a very <laughs> odd child. <laughs> Cause but, I, but it was almost like, you know, and I think that to do the work that you do, you know, I mean, we're talking like this podcast can apply to anybody, but our community happens to be mostly a largely spiritual people. So they understand that higher realms of consciousness or mm -hmm. existence. But I think that there has to be a certain level of spiritual development and soul evolution mm -hmm. in order to do um, the type of work and to hold the spaces for these major transitions and, 
and shifts that people have in their life. Yeah. And, you know, that you kind of have to get on, you know, like, I mean, if you're this new, like this old soul being plopped into this, it's like, okay, we got to get on this chart, you know, cause you gotta, get, you gotta go into this path. You're, you're yeah. here, you know? So like, I think maybe it's like sprinkled uh, awarenesses that it's happening because you weren't a normal child because you weren't a young soul. You were this older, wiser soul that was seeing things from a peculiar light because you felt this pull. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, like, yeah. you know, I, I mean, that's not a normal teenage, you know, <laughs> like let's let's the most teenagers are watching like love stories about like, you know, proms and <laughs> yeah. like, the, the, you know, the, yeah. the, 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 the iconic high school sweetheart, you know, type right. of things and, you know, not hanging out with senior citizens and, <laughs> and, and, and uh, being um, drawn to uh, torturous stories yeah. about women that committed suicide or ended their life because they lost their identity from childbirth. Like, yeah. I mean, that's not the normal no. interest. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. Yeah, I do think, I think I'm an old soul. I've, I've kind of, I've had a lot of family and friends have said that. Um, but I've, yeah, I've always felt kind of different and pulled in different directions than a lot of my peers. So, but that's beautiful because then that leads you to be in this unique position that you have something to offer people that is really needed and, and talk about timing. You said like two mm. years ago, you <laughs> started the company. And I mean, yeah. I think that we've, as a society, global city, whatever, I think that there's some of the most passings mm -hmm. have occurred, right? One from the global, global pandemic, but then the offshoot of that. I mean, there's been, they say like what, like a 50% increase in suicides and other stuff. And um, then illnesses, cancers, other stuff is like, whoo, everything's yeah. on the rise, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and it's like everywhere you turn, people are getting diagnosed with things and having a hard time figuring out what are the steps and how to get into that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the timing, yeah, it, it's needed. Also from a business perspective, maybe not the best time to start a business, <laughs> but it was, the t it was time. It was time. It yeah. just felt, it felt like time. Yeah. And, um, what else would you like to share a little bit more on, on death doula? You know, like anything else on, on like the whys or, 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 you know, I don't know, leaving it up to you for this. I just think the, the most important thing, the thing that weighs the heaviest on my heart is that we really, when dying doesn't have to be something that we avoid, it can be something that we embrace as crazy as that may sound. Um, and it doesn't have to be this completely remote, um, just heavy, horrible time. There's, there's space for all of it to exist. You know, they, there can be joy and expansion mm -hmm. in, in death. But I, I really feel that having a, a death doula to support you and your family through that experience can allow more space for those moments to happen and yeah. for that sacred moment in time to really be as sacred as possible um yeah I think I that's... love that where do people where do people find you to you know like to get in contact to see about working with you you know to find out more information they can go to my website um which is lifeanddeathwithkelly.com <laughs> <laughs> um, or I have my Instagram and I'm not really on TikTok, but kind of on TikTok, um, is till death doula parts. That's my, uh, my I DBA. It. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, wanted to bring a little levity into the, yeah. the subject. Well, of I death. mean, I think that that's with anything in life, you know, there's, it can be as serious as it can be, or you can find the humor and lightness in it. I mean, yeah, we're all floating around on a 
on a globe held together by an invisible force called gravity and orbiting an atomic <laughs> bomb, you know, called the sun. Right. right? You know, right. like, I mean, it's kind of like our whole existence is a little peculiar. Right. And right. We can find Especially like, when you put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, it's like we're really upside down right now, but we think we're right side yeah. up and there's all this, you know, and we create, you know, if you, anytime I ever see like just a picture of, like the galaxy and you see, you know, oh, and, yeah. and you see the swirls and the light and you realize, you know, this is a, this is a moment in time, mm -hmm. right? It's a moment in time and this ability that with this crazy complex mind of ours that lets us create meaning out of anything, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In that is the poison and the cure, right? Because if, if we can create meaning out of anything, you can create fun and joy and lightheartedness mm -hmm. and adventure and expansion and seeing the beauty and celebration, or you can find the pain and the agony. Yeah. Wow. But it's just is, you know? Yeah. And it's just a moment in time. And so what do you want to get out of it? Mm-hmm. And if you can have support and a way to have somebody that you can lean on, like you, when you're going through the difficult times, maybe you can get back to remembering the celebration of life, the joy, the beauty, the fact that so many people don't get to know when there's a click off point. Right? Yeah, yeah. And even if it's not like the exact day, like it's, hey, you know, if you, if you or your loved one gets diagnosed with a terminal illness, one there's hope and fighting it, and I always believe, and we, you know, that's what these centers are about. Is is that there's ways that there's miraculous healing and recovery that can happen. But you know, if it does end in in death, mm -hmm. you know, like, can there be a celebration of that experience? You know, yeah. that's a, like so many people, their loved one just dies randomly in a car accident, yeah. or or doesn't wake up that one morning, you know, because something happens in the sleep, and like. This is an opportunity that you have time. Yeah. You know, you have yeah. the ability to leave a legacy. You have the ability to spend more time with your loved ones. You have the ability, you know. Yeah. And and yeah. it's a, such a blessing and it's all a perspective shift. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I want more people to be able to, to find you. You do workshops too. Yes, I do. Do you want yeah. to talk about a little bit about some of the workshops that you, you put on? Cause yeah. So I hold on the, on the life coaching side, I hold um, workshops around the full and new moon mm -hmm. um, for mothers, their mother's circles. Um, and as a death doula, I offer a, my good death workshop where we go through, if you could have an ideal death, what would that look like to you? And facing some of those fears together in support and community. Um, so this is like that two chapters or two yeah. curriculums. Okay, this is it. This but is, it's not this theirs. Is, I didn't. I, no, 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 yeah. no. But this is what everybody needs to do, right? I, you know, so it's not even if you're, you're you, you know, even if you're just having a fear on death or you want to, it sounds like, I mean, that's beautiful. It's a, you said one of the things that you got out of it is you start to live life more fully, mm -hmm. right? So if you're yeah. feeling a little bit depressed, low, not embracing your life, feeling like you're kind of letting things shelve on the side, not getting things done, that sounds like the program, right? Yeah. Because yeah. It's like, I mean, it's it was like, for me. It, Absolutely. It, you know, like it has the potential. And so then it could also be, hey, maybe you get a prognosis or a diagnosis or you have something happen and you need to start looking at things. Or, you know, maybe there's this paralyzing fear yeah. that has been preventing you from, you know, or it's, it's plaguing your life, right? But that seems like, hey, people should be signing up. Does it, <laughs> doesn't mean that, you know, like, if you want a more fulfilling life, if you, want a, if you want to live life more fully or not have as much fear, or if there is a need for you to actually face it because there's something pending on that that is pressing on that pressure. Yeah. But it doesn't need to be when there's pressure. I mean, it is, it is happening. <laughs> it's going to happen. And living with that in, I, I call it keeping death in my pocket. Yeah. So keeping it in my pocket allows me to really, it's, it quiets the excuses 
for why I need to be more like, you know, everyone else or do things the right way, the way that makes the most logical sense and just gives me permission to lead with my heart and my Mm. intuition. Oh, I love that. Absolutely, absolutely (laughs) love that. Well, I hope that more people can find and find you and work with you and these workshops that you do uh, are available online too, right? Yes. So, you know, with them being available online, it doesn't matter where you're at. You don't have to be local. You can be anywhere and you can just figure out more information even just for you, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's such a beautiful service that you provide that is so needed. I think the awareness just needs to get out there of what it is, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that it doesn't have to be super hooey wooey. I know it has an interesting word of doula, but, you know, doula support, there's a lot of birthing doulas and, you know, like, and that's becoming a little bit more awareness, but it's like, it's having support Mm -hmm. and being able to have support in some of the trying times with somebody that has the expertise and the ability and the understanding is priceless. Thank you. Well, thank you for what you do. Thanks. Thank you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> if you wanted to leave anybody, everybody with something, what would it be? Oh my gosh. Yeah, you on. know, just a little question. Um, I just, I would just hope that they can live with death in their pocket and um, live the most authentic life that they possibly can. Yeah. Permission to do so. Permission to live and be authentic. (laughs) I love it. And for all of those that are joining in, please check out Kelly's website um, and allow yourself to check out the other podcasts so you can find a little bit more about Uh, her life coaching and relationship with motherhood and all the beautiful work that she's doing there on helping people continue to have their identity, even in the face of a new family. Um, If uh, you could do us a favor, like, comment, and subscribe, check out those smaller clips uh, that we also have, share them, please share them. Let more people know that this type of work exists. Check out our other podcasts and stuff. And until next time, thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, Also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, U-R-S-E-L-F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free.